Okay, so the velocity of sound does have a dependence on the temperature, and it's given by this equation here. We're going to derive this equation now. Okay, so we've just shown that the velocity is equal to the square root of b over rho. Now, the density is actually dependent on the temperature because we've got density of a gas is equal to the number of moles of a gas times the molar mass over the volume, and we have PV is equal to nRT. So that tells us that n over V is equal to P over RT. So we can write that the density is equal to P over RT times the molar mass. Now the pressure, this is just the outside pressure, so this is the atmospheric pressure, it's not changing. The molar mass of the substance that it's going through is not changing. R is a gas constant, so it's not changing. So we can say that the density is proportional to 1 over the temperature. That's the only variable in this equation. The bulk modulus for a given material also does not change. So we have that the velocity is proportional to 1 over the square root of the density which is proportional to, because the density is proportional to 1 over t, this is proportional to the square root of the temperature. So this means that we can write v1 over v2 is equal to the square root of t1 over t2. Or the velocity at some temperature over the velocity at 0 degrees C is equal to the square root. Now this was the ideal gas law. So these ones are in kelvins. So this is T, let's call it Tc plus 273. This is the temperature in Celsius over the temperature at 0 degrees C, which is the 273. So this is gives us V is equal to V0, the speed at 0 degrees C over 273 over 273 is the 1, plus then we've got the Tc over 273. So that's derived this equation here. This is the velocity of sound in air at zero degrees C. This needs to be measured or told to you. Okay, so this table just presents the speed of sound in various mediums. As these gases get heavier, you can see the speed of sound decreases as we'd expect because as the density is increasing, as this is increasing, this needs to decrease. With liquids, we can see that the speed of sound is higher in liquids and that it's even higher in solids. For liquids and solids, you would need to consider the bulk modulus and how that's going to affect it as well. Okay, so let's have a look at how pressure and displacement are related. We can consider the maximum values. So we've said that the change in the pressure is equal to B K S max sine kx minus omega t. Now the maximum value for this is going to be when this is equal to 1. So the maximum pressure differential will be b k s max. Okay. Now the bulk modulus isn't an especially useful thing to work with so let's try and change this around a bit. We've said that the velocity is equal to the square root of b the bulk modulus over the density which tells us that the bulk modulus is equal to the velocity squared times the density so we can replace this term with that. K is equal to 2 pi over lambda. Lambda is equal to the velocity over the frequency. So we can write this as omega over V. So let's make these replacements. We've got V squared rho times omega over V times S max. These Vs cancel and we end up with V rho omega S max is equal to the maximum pressure differential. The reason for doing this is just that the density, the velocity and the angular frequency of the sound wave are easier to measure than the bulk modulus. Okay, so let's consider the intensity of periodic sound waves. So we've said previously that waves carry energy and sound waves are a type of wave so they carry energy as well. So let's imagine a piston moving backwards and forwards and creating sound waves. As it does that, as it moves backwards and forwards, it's doing work on the gas. And work is given by F dot dx. So work is a form of energy. So the rate of work done gives us the power. So the, that gives us the rate at which we're putting energy in. So power is equal to F, and now is the x which is changing with time. So we have Vx, that's the derivative of x with time. 
Okay, now you don't need to be able to reproduce this derivation, but just so that you've seen it. Power is equal to F dot Vx, that's what we just said. Now the force applied, the resultant force was equal to the chain pressure differential times the area. And then we have to take the derivative of the equilibrium displacement to get the velocity of the increment that we're considering. So we've said that delta P is equal to P V omega A S max sine Kx minus omega T. So we're just substituting in for that. And we're just substituting in for this S as well. We've got S max cos Kx minus omega T. Now all we need to do is take the derivative of this. When we do that, we get omega S max sine Kx minus omega T. And so then multiplying these two together, we end up with rho V omega squared A S max squared sine squared Kx minus omega T. So this gives us the power which is transferred at any point in space and time. Now what we're really more interested in is the average power which is transferred. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the average value of this thing over one period. If we then divide that by one period here, divide it by the time it takes for one period, that will give us the average amount of power. So all we do now is we integrate this term here because it's the only one with a t dependence over one period. It's just a standard integral and it actually turns out that this is equal to a half. So we can replace this with a half. And so the average power is given by a half rho v omega squared a s squared max. And the intensity is always just the power over the area. So this power spreads out over an area and that gives us our intensity. So for this case, with the wave moving in the x direction, we have the intensity is just a half rho v omega s max all squared. Or in terms of pressure, we can replace this rho v omega s max squared with a delta p squared, and then we just have to divide by the two rho v. We can get the intensity is proportional to the maximum pressure in this form. Now, usually sound waves are traveling out through three-dimensional space and they're traveling in the same velocity in each direction. And so they end up being spread over the surface area of a sphere. So generally, in this intensity formula, the area that we're considering is 4 pi r squared, the surface area of the sphere. So to practice using these equations, try homework set 6 for Phys 1121 students, 6, 7, 8, 12 and 13. For 1131 students, questions 7, 9, 10, 12, 15, and 16. Okay, quick quiz. This is quite difficult. A vibrating guitar string makes very little sound if it is not mounted in the guitar body. Why does the sound have greater intensity if the string is attached to the guitar body? A. The string vibrates with more energy. B. The energy leaves the guitar at a greater rate. C. The sound area is spread over a large area at the listener's position. D, the sound area is concentrated over a smaller area at the listener's position. E, the speed of sound is higher in the material of the guitar body. Or F, none of these is correct.